Uh, speaking of numbers, yeah, uh, we have on the phone the number one comedian from Nelson, Guy Williams. <laughs> Hello, thanks for having me. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> what an intro! That was great. I I don't think I am the um, number one comedian. There's actually another comedian called Terry Williams, oh, Terry who's Pitt, no Terry relation Pitt. to me, who's much better than me. So number two comedian from Nelson. Is there no relation to you because you've excommunicated him from the family after beating you? <laughs> he might have excommunicated me. I don't know, but um, he. All I know is that he's uh, he's he's very good. <laughs> he's very good. That's cool. Hey, you seem like you've been a very busy man lately. Is that would that be true? Yeah, well, I spend most of my days at the moment um, just walking around town in my black cap shirt, trying to be a Daniel Vittori impersonator. Yeah, you'd be mm. good at that. Mm. So um, I, I'm really proud that I've finally got a celebrity doppelganger, um, <laughs> and he's he's really popular at the moment, which is really really awesome. You know, it's been it's been a uh, busy, exciting time. Yeah. In a way, didn't he move to the bearded look? So he's almost uh, you're almost his doppelganger the other way around. He's trying to imitate you <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> Something tells me that Daniel Vittori is not imitating me, but thank you. That's blasphemy, by the way. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going to try to go Williams today. Let's, let's see what we can do. No, that's so fun. Is this what you thought you'd be doing with your life, dressing up and pretending to be a cricket player and all that? <laughs> not, re- not, not really, to be honest. I'm kind of living the vida loca at the moment. It's amazing that, um, the luck and opportunity opportunities I have. I mean, I studied... Um, political science at university oh, true. and um then somehow i just fluked into like the best funnest job in the world yeah it's uh, i think I ge- oh no you go you go back no I, I, gen- I, I genuinely just feel like all i wanted to do with my life was just talk shit and that original dream was politics but now it turns out i was better suited to comedy <laughs> <laughs> that's One funny the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, you're coming to our fine city tomorrow one of our yeah. one of our friends, a listener of a friend, not one of our listeners, but her friend, <laughs> wanted yeah. to know uh, what what's your opinion of Palmy. I um I genuinely uh, quite enjoy visiting it. I enjoy any uh, any kind of uh, more provincial New Zealand city. I'm not a big fan of Auckland, even though I have to live here for work. Mm. But um, it reminds me a lot of my my hometown, Nelson. It's quite small. And I just love the square. Eh? I think it's very beautiful. Oh, it is. You're mm. not wrong there, mate. I, I, I think it's. I think that main street is weird. The main. You know how you've got one street that just has non-stop motels all the way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And last time I, um, last time I stayed at uh, one of those motels, I remember just. Palmy, I think, needs to lift itself up and have more faith and more belief in its city. Preach. Like, like. Um, I uh, I went to the reception and I asked what's there to do in Palmy, and um, the lady at the desk said uh, you can go to the movies, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you can do that anywhere in New Zealand. <laughs> That's not a, like an attraction. It's like saying you can go for a walk on the street or go to a McDonald's. <laughs> Oh, you could get a happy meal and go to the movies, but that's pretty much it. Oh, that's so fun. That's so palmy, too. It's like everyone thinks we're shit, but we actually, when you tr- think hard, we actually do have a nice park. Yeah. That you split oh, no, hype, 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 hype yourself up. Palmy's a bloody lovely place. It's got an awesome university. This is true. Student culture. And um and just like beautiful fields, like if you go outside the town any direction in like fifteen minutes, it's yeah, it's a re- it's a re- it's a really great place, and yeah, people just need to have a bit more faith, and if they'd stop being so self deprecating and calling it a whole a whole all the time, <laughs> um, I feel like the the reputation would catch on around the country. I tell you, we've just had a by election for a mayor, and I feel like you should have run for yeah. it. We need, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. I would be absolutely shit house. I would take the first twenty four steps and nothing would get done. I mean I ran for it, so I feel like you could run for it. How did you go? How'd you go? You know, I came seventh out of nine, so I'm I'm not I'm not upset with my result. Yeah. That is a very good effort. That's a hell of, I feel so sorry for the poor bastard who fo- finished below you, that's what I can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Um, so, you're doing three shows here. People just think you're shit hot, right? But they're right. Three shows, no. is, is, that, is that normal? 
Well, it was really clever because the dark room, which is the venue I'm doing it at, which I think is a new venue, they very geniusly booked me in a tiny, tiny venue. Yeah. So yeah. I'm selling out shows, <laughs> but that's largely due to the fact that the capacity is like 15 people. <laughs> Yes. So I'm telling people to get a ticket now, not because I want to plug the show, but because there's so few tickets available, <laughs> and I'm doing so many shows I can't do any more. But if you want a ticket, you've got to, literally got to book right now because it'll be sold out. Yeah, yeah the biggest acts in place. the world sell out three shows uh, on a, uh, in one place on a tour, and you're you're looking like uh, you might you might sell. If you do sell out three, are you going to go to one at like midnight as well, <laughs> mate? Stop trying to make it sound like this is an impressive feat. The <laughs> venue is 50 seats. Uh, I appreciate you trying to hype me up. You, you can be my hype man. You can uh, you can give me a big baller as introduction. And stuff. This guy, William! <laughs> I can do that. The only thing is, I don't think I would sell out a 50 seat uh, venue even once. So you, you're doing something right. Well, what would you do? What would you perform to try and do that? Are you a comedian? Are you a the spoon player? What do you do? Uh, I'm I'm the hype man for, for Guy Williams, so they'd probably be quite disappointed <laughs> once I got through my intro and then realised that it was just me oh, doing the Dave. hype man. Bit. <laughs> I like that. It could be a good show. <laughs> it's conceptual. It's good. It's what good. what can people expect from your sellout shows? I just think a bloody shambles, eh? <laughs> Come along. Give me a high five. We'll get this party started, and I'm just going to talk some shit for an hour. It's going to be a really good time. That's going to be awesome. And, I mean, with with three individual shows, it's going to be the VIP experience every time, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what the VIP experience is, <laughs> but I feel like I'm going to have to go get, like, one of those Briscoe's foot spas and, like... Get it running for the audience just to make them feel like they're VIPs now. Yeah, you're building up expectations to levels that I cannot uh, not compete with. Eh? I tell you, but people will just be excited anyway because I mean it's a step up from the movies seeing live comedy. <laughs> <laughs> that night, okay. Tomorrow night, for one night only, that lady at reception will be able to add one more thing on the list of things to do in Palmerston North. Uh, yeah, quick, you might be able to get a ticket to the, to the <laughs> third the nine, nine nearly sold-out yeah. show, 945 show. <laughs> and then after that, we'll all go see um, the new uh, the new Hunger Games style film, whatever the hell that's called. What is that called? I can't even remember. Something I, about a mockingbird or something. Jump on the fire. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go see Jump on the Fire after that. Awesome. <laughs> the Hunger Games Jump on the Fire. No, I love it. It sounds exciting. Um, we we got a, we got another text in from our friends listening. Our listeners' friend. Uh, she wants to know how long does it take you to think up the tweets you're going to tweet? But I feel like it would just come naturally. Do you to throw you. them into drafts and and sit on them for a day and then come back? Well, to Anyone who's followed my Twitter account recently, which has just been like verbal diarrhea about X Factor and the Black Cats, will know that probably about zero seconds. <laughs> but I do, I do, when I do, if I do have too many ideas at one time, because creativity is quite weird like that. Like, mm. it comes to you, sometimes you're gushing and then other times you're um, stone cold. And so if I do have a lot of ideas and too many to tweet, I will, um, I will draft them up and, um, that's a depressing answer, eh? I draft my no, tweets. No, I'm the not loneliest, not. saddest man in the world. <laughs> Our stories came out this morning uh, that Susan Pauls tweeted out uh, a bit of a racist tweet, and I think she probably needed to take a page from your book. She said, got the cricket on, and by the looks of the stands, all the dairies in Sydney must be closed. So I feel <laughs> like, perhaps... Was Suzanne Paul, of all people. I think she should uh, probably draft up draft up some tweet ideas, that or perhaps you could send some of the oh. ones you might not use to her, you know? The number, the number of times, the number of times that I have um, tweeted something and then instantly regretted it and deleted it <laughs> as fast as you can say is absolutely remarkable. And that's the scary thing about social media, having that direct news. Can I say, though, that I think that Suzanne Paul comment, I think it was a Facebook post, I don't think it's that bad. Like, she's just an old cracker, and she's trying to make a joke, and she's funny, but I don't think there's any... There's no malice behind it, you know. Yeah, she's white trash and she doesn't know any better. But, you know, like, I feel like sometimes at the moment, especially on Twitter, people are jumping too hard on calling things racist. And as a result, um, when genuinely racist things do happen, that word kind of loses its impact a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gets lumped in with Suzanne Paul. 
I do, yeah, I do, I do worry because I mean she's just a dotty old old lady. I wouldn't worry too much about her. It's um, there's some other people out there that I'd be more worried about in this kind of things they say, you know. For sure. Um, it's not that it's not that bad a stereotype that a lot of dairies are owned by Indians, but maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. I, 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 I let's be honest. I'm not the best spokesperson for the <laughs> Indian community. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. No, that's good. I like. I like what you're saying, man. And if you uh, if you want, you can probably end up with a career ghostwriting for Suzanne Paul. Uh, social media. <laughs> <online, so. laughs> Suzanne Paul's tweet. That is a great <laughs> idea. Uh, if you were, a fr- I- oh no, you go. Oh, I was going to say, can, can I say first of all that this is the best and longest radio interview I've ever done in my life. <laughs> no. Normally people cut me off after three minutes, so thank you very much for letting me talk. I really, it's genuinely really awesome. Oh, you're so welcome. And I wish that I wish we'd be able to do um, interviews this long on the edge. Yeah. And, um, the and edge. secondly, uh, can I also plug uh, the other thing that's happening is Jono and Bennett um, seven thirty is starting tonight as well. If I can put a cheeky plug in for that. Yeah, yeah what a twist, isn't it? Why have you moved to a family friendly hour? Doesn't even rhyme anymore. Because, yeah, we've lost, what we've lost in rhyme scheme, we've made up with, and hopefully, a bigger and better audience. That's the dream anyway, who knows, maybe everyone will be pissed off. But um, what we found is that our show was being what, weirdly, we aim to make like a late night adult comedy, and we accidentally made a show that kids love. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what we've done is we've moved it into like a broad time slot, and it does mean that we have to beat um, f bombs now. But I mean, that's not that bad. I mean, you guys don't have f bombs on your radio show, and it's a cracker, right? Uh, not unless you want to do one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try and add in uh, uh, an f bomb right now just for the sake of it. But my point is, is that uh, we, we there's very little censorship. Like we have to beat certain words now, and that's the only difference. Yeah. And for us to get um, to get on a time slot where people actually might be awake to watch sober is a dream come true. <laughs> true. No, that's beautiful. So you'd be just after Campbell Live, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's a weird that's a weird situation it's to say the least. <laughs> I don't think he's happy about like the declining stance of the T V three, but we are loving it. <laughs> no, you would, you would. Are you friends with Hillary Barry? Um, I'll tell you what, everyone is friends with Hillary Barry. I'd love to be her friend. <laughs> People, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so lovely, and um, oh my god, we get her on the radio all the time. We um, uh, we have her on the show, and she's just literally the funnest, nicest, bestest person in the world. And sometimes, and I don't want to say this too loud, but sometimes I wish she was my mum. Yeah, well, lovely no, lady. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. Um, maybe we should try to get her on the show. Not that you're not fabulous, but you know, if we can step up to Hillary Berry. Oh, that would be a huge upgrade, guys, and Godspeed for that, eh? That would be awesome. I mean, we were trying to hunt for Ben Lummis, but so far, no success. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's trying to hunt for Ben Lummis. That man is a true New Zealand icon, and I honestly think if he put on a uni tour this year where he just went around all the unis, he would sell out, like, 2,000-seat venues. Eh? He wouldn't be doing 50-seaters like me. <laughs> he would be doing stadium status, and it would be off the hook. We should we should try look into that. We'll I reckon. Keep, we'll keep looking into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe tempt him with that. <laughs> hey, you need to a mate. Come on. Um, yeah. Guy Williams, if you were a fruit, what fruit do you think you'd be? I would definitely be a nectarine, just because I love the juicy texture mm-hmm. and I love the juiciness of the name nectarine. Mm-hmm. It just really rolls off the tongue. It's Doesn't beautiful. it though? Nectarine. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for chatting with us this morning, Guy. It's been a true true joy. No, thank you for, okay, true joy. You're taking the piss when you say that. It's, it's been a true joy. It's true, it but it's it been, has. like like my show, it's been mildly acceptable. And um, and my show's going to be mildly acceptable as well. And so is John and Ben, so please watch tonight at 7.30. No, we can't wait. We, we can't will wait. lock it in or book it on the old series link. Yeah, there you, go. <laughs> you sound like you're taking the piss again. I don't no, believe you. Thanks, thanks for having me on your wonderful radio show. Oh, thanks for being here. See you next Cheers, time. Guys. We should chat again. I love you. Oh, definitely. Love you too. See you later. All right. Bye, bye. Bye. bye.